Okay, so today we're going to be tackling the problem from complex analysis. How many zeros does a certain polynomial have in the unit disk? And now off the top of your head, this might be a pretty hard problem to solve because unless you know, for example, what a factor of this polynomial might be, you don't really get closer to where all seven zeros might be. And maybe you have a sophisticated computer program at your disposal, but maybe you don't. So sometimes it's easier to just estimate these things. So in this problem, they're asking us to estimate how many zeros does this polynomial have in the unit disk. And so the way we're going to do that is using a tool called Rouchet's theorem. Rouchet's theorem allows us to find the number of zeros of this polynomial in the disk by estimating it with a nicer function. Okay, so in order to use this theorem, let's take a look at what it actually says. So Rouchet's theorem says the following. If f and g are two analytic functions on a closed contour gamma, or, or rather inside, inside a closed contour gamma, then if f and g satisfy the following inequality, so if f z minus g of z is strictly less than, and I'll use uh, two different fonts here because there are two versions you may have seen. So this is the typical version, just f of z over there. But there is a more, there's another version which is actually true, uh, proven by Erstman, which is a little bit harder to show, but this is true. So if you're allowed to use this in your class, you can use this this bit that I'm writing in purple and the, the entire statement is, is still true. So if f and g are two analytic functions inside this uh, contour gamma, then if f minus g, uh, the modulus is less than the sum of the moduli of f and g, then, oh, I'm sorry, on, on gamma, so we only have to satisfy on gamma, then f and g have the same number of zeros inside gamma. Okay, so in the context of this problem, what that means is that we have a polynomial, f. So if we can find some other really nice function, an analytic function, g, which behaves really nicely on the boundary of the disk with f, that is, we can control the moduli pretty nicely, then we can say something very quickly about the number of zeros of f given g. Simple enough. Okay, so then the question is, how do we go about choosing this g? So we might want to pick something where the zeros are very well controlled and which also takes a lot of value off this f. So the intelligent thing to do with this f is to see how we can get the most value off of it in the unit disk. And so we know that in the unit disk, all the z in there, all the values in the unit disk have modulus strictly less than one. So this power to the seven is really not gonna be adding much value to f in terms of moduli. So really what's being dominate, or what is dominating here is going to be the coefficients. So namely, we might think, we might take an educated guess and think that this six z cubed term is going to add the most value to the modulus of f. So maybe a choice for our g value is going to be 6z cubed. Okay, another advantage about this function is that the 6z cubed, we know where all its zeros are. So namely, we know that we have three zeros or a zero at the origin with multiplicity three. Let's investigate this as part of Rouchet's theorem. So if we write out the difference, it looks like this. z to the seventh, minus 2z to the fifth, the 6z cubed term goes away because we subtract that off, minus z plus 1. Okay, and we can do a really kind of crude estimate here and use the triangle inequality, which is, again, a pretty poor estimate, but it will be sufficient for our purposes. And by using the triangle inequality, we get the following. Oops, that's supposed to be a z to the fifth minus the absolute value of z plus 1. Okay, fair enough. But remember... We're operating on the boundary of the disk. And what do we know about the boundary of disk? 
Well, the absolute value of all those z, or the modulus rather, is just one. So this expression on the right-hand side becomes, that's supposed to be a plus there because I'm using the triangle inequality, is one plus two plus one plus one, which we know is just five. But again, we're working on the boundary of the disk. So five is less than six, as we know, but six on the boundary of the disk is six times the modulus of z cubed, which again is the value of the uh, modulus of g on the boundary of the disk. So we've shown that our functions satisfy Roucher's theorem. And that means that the conclusion of Roucher's theorem tells us the following. That f, our original polynomial, has three zeros inside the boundary of the disk, but this we just know is the disk itself, and so we've answered our question.